Siberia is an extensive geographical region constituting of all of North Asia. From the Ural Mountains in the west to the Pacific Ocean in the east, it has been part of Russia since the latter half of the 16th century and after the Russians conquered lands east of the Ural Mountains. Siberia is a very beautiful country. It has very rugged winter conditions. It is also home to the world's largest cat, the ferocious Siberian tiger. This is the story of one tiger's revenge. Please let us know what you think in the comment section. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we hope you enjoy this video. In the winter of 1997, poacher Vladimir Markov was going hunting with some friends. Being a resourceful hunter, Markov, having done this many times before, kissed his wife goodbye and had some friends drive him down one of the most remote roads imaginable in Mochigorsk. Once arriving to the campsite, Markov and his friend unpacked his bag preparing to stay the night. The next morning, Markov woke up alone and decided to go hunting. As Markov and his dogs took off, they weren't looking for anything in particular as he'd done this many times before. He was just looking for something that he could hunt and kill and sell on the black market. A kill of even just one of these animals would garner him a lot of money on the black market. Not long afterwards, Markov and his dogs came across the front paw of a male Siberian tiger. This was the opportunity that he'd been waiting for, or so he thought. Markov and the dogs continued to track the tiger, and they knew that it was tracking a wild boar, so they followed it. Eventually, not before long, they came upon the Siberian tiger, hovering over its recent kill, glaring at the man, refusing to budge. As beast and man stared at one another, Markov quickly fired one shot, hitting the tiger. As it dashed off into the white birch forest, he knew he'd hit it and was confident. He was so confident that he walked over to the recently killed boar by the tiger and started cutting his own meat off. As he salvaged as much meat as he could, he then focused his attention on the tiger, which he was sure should be lying dead over the hill. As Markov continued to track the majestic beast, he noticed the blood trails seemed to thin out, as if the tiger wasn't as injured as he may have originally thought. As the day continued, Markov decided to take the dogs and go back to his cabin, where they feasted on some of the wild boar that they had retrieved from the tiger. They also went into town and he traded some of the meat the next day. While Markov was in town, what he didn't know is that the tiger returned to the original location looking for its meat and realized it was gone. Using its keen sense of smell, the feline tracked its original kill back to Markov's camp. Incredibly, after eating the kill, the tiger destroyed Markov's camp. It appears to be out of anger. As Markov's dogs continued to bark, the tiger paced back and forth, apparently angered and decisively waiting to make his next move. With all of the commotion going on outside, Markov decides to get a good look. He had a rifle portal built into the cabin so that he could actually shoot, but he actually needed to go outside, so he went outside to look around. And sensed that the fact that this cat refused to leave Markov went out to finally try and end it with one bullet. The cat was shot again a second time by the same man and had managed to dash off into the woods. Due to the fact that the tiger had reclaimed its kill and still came back, Markov knew that this wasn't about food. In the Far East, tigers are known to have a vengeful spirit to those who have wronged them. Locals have also stated that these tigers have a vengeful spirit long after the incident is over. Eventually, Markov became tired and decided to go back to the safety of his friends in their cabin and eventually civilization. 
However, he had some car troubles and needed some equipment back at his cabin and decided he was gonna also end the quarrel with the tiger once and for all. So he rounded back towards his cabin in search of the tiger yet again. As Markov continued to head back, he didn't realize that the tiger had already gained entry into his cabin, destroying literally everything in it, even its tools chewing into them. Then the tiger was resolved to finding a nice spot outside and waiting. Once he returned, the tiger ambushed him. The fight, if you want to call it that, didn't last long. Investigators would later track a bloody trail from the cabin out to a brush patch in the middle of the snow where they found a dog leg, a femur from a human clinged down to the bone, and other body parts. Further investigation found the remains of Markov, which were only bits and pieces, some still attached to his clothing. Even after devouring Markov, the tiger ran across another enclosure that had his scent on it and completely destroyed the campsite. By now, local villagers had heard of the tiger attack and forbade anyone to go into the woods alone, all except for one explorer, a 25-year-old trapper named Andre Pichitnia, whose parents had forbade him from going to check on his traps until the tiger was caught. Unknowing to the determined trapper, the tiger had already caught on to his scent as well, just like he did with Marco, and had trashed one of his camps. The tiger continued and pulled a mattress out into the woods as if it were a decoy and laid in wait for the young trapper. As the young man approached the camp, the tiger pounced but it was still 10 to 20 yards away. The young man, however, was quick to his reflexes and fired one shot. However, the shot never fired. Siberian winters are so cold that it can actually freeze the encasement of the bullet where it has to travel. As the tiger leaped towards the young man, he could do nothing. The tiger instantly broke his neck, leaving no blood trail dragging him off into the woods. Meanwhile, Andre's father rounded up a search party in the village and they all went out to track the tiger and look for his son. What they found was horrific. Andre had been reduced to nothing but his shirt and his pants and one bloody boot. There was nothing else left. All the remains that they could gather of him could fit in a shirt pocket. He had been completely consumed by the tiger. Soon afterwards, the villagers collected themselves and decided to hire a professional tiger tracker named Yuri Kush. Kush and his team tracked the tiger throughout the mountainous terrain and leading them to an encampment where the tiger was lying in wait for the three of them. As Kush noticed the tiger, it leapt at him and he didn't have any time to react fired off two shots and the other men fired off 11. Although none of this could stop the momentum of the powerful cat that had lunged toward him in the air, it eventually hit him, knocking him backwards. As Trish gathered himself and the other two came over to help, it was visibly noted that the tiger was dead. However, Trish had deep gashes and lacerations from the tiger's initial leap towards him. In the aftermath of the attacks, the Siberian tiger found to be responsible for these attacks was later found to have been injured by not two, but at least three or four other hunters. In closing, rest in peace to the two victims. But I must wonder, are some of these attacks warranted by these animals when we encroach in their territories? Please like, share, and subscribe and comment. We hope you enjoyed the video. Again, rest in peace to the victims. God bless. Video Fit Solutions out.